are built to withstand burst tires. The Concorde's high-speed takeoffs put its tires under much greater stress. Very interesting uh, to look at the overall design of the uh, Concorde. Uh, it had uh, some vulnerabilities, and uh, the vulnerabilities was this uh, very high takeoff speed, uh, requiring uh, a, a ground contact uh, all the way up to almost 200 knots. These things were uh, pretty demanding. And Concorde had had a record 57 burst or deflated tires, some with near catastrophic results. The most dangerous and dramatic has striking parallels with the 2000 crash. On June 14, 1979, a Concorde flight was leaving Washington for Paris. Among the passengers was an aviation consultant, Bill Lightfoot. His seat window had a view of the wings. I boarded from four, sat down. We then went through the normal free takeoff procedures and then got as the aircraft rotated, getting ready to take off. There was a violent shove it, aircraft struck like that. And then just almost at the same instant, a large Shortly after the incident, the Francis Aviation Watchdog advised further investigation of the wings and possible modifications. The wind gets yellow, but these modifications did not take care. Its recommendations were not implemented. What did the recommendations consist of? To strengthen the fuel tanks with heavy In fact, the exact same modifications that would be made to Concord after the 2000 crash. And yet, it seems I never know if they had followed these recommendations, they would not have been called those deaths. Airbus, which was then Aerospatial and Concorde's manufacturer, says that at the time, it agreed with aviation authorities to focus on the causes of the Dulles accident rather than the effects. And so the wings were not modified. But possible causes of the Paris crash have also focused on Air France's maintenance. And in particular, a large tubular spacer. I was...